Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. I have finally completed the trifecta of the NVIDIA 10 series of cards, going out and picking up the GTX 1070, ordered that off Amazon the other day, paid $450 for the Founders Edition of that card. So I've got all Founders Edition cards here today, and we are going to be testing those cards at stock speeds. I wanted to go back and kind of retest the 1060 and the 1080 as well, and refine some of the benchmarks and take some of the feedback that the community had given, like for instance, uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider. A lot of people had suggested testing that at DirectX 11 instead of DirectX 12 because the DirectX 12 actually performs worse. And I went ahead and compared them side by side. And yes, uh, Direct DirectX 12 was trailing behind by only one FPS, which is kind of within the margin of error, but it was trailing behind. So I decided to do DX11 testing because that's what you guys asked for. So uh, that's what I did. And I refined the testing in quite a few games. And we went, I did 20 games in total. A few in synthetics are thrown in there, but it's mostly just real world in-game benchmarks testing on the 1060, 1070, and 1080 at all three resolutions. That's 1080p, 1440, and 4K. And we're going to be following up this video with an ultra wide testing at 2560 by 1080 and 3440 by 1440. That's going to be coming in just a couple of days. So make sure that you are subscribed for that video. Some other changes that I made to my testing is if you guys aren't familiar with or maybe you're new here in the past, usually I had tested with no game works, no anti-aliasing and everything else cranked up to ultra. Well, the only change that I made here this time around is that instead of no anti-aliasing, I decided to use FXAA if and when it was available in certain games and in other games like The Witcher where it just had a toggle anti-aliasing on or off, then I would choose to use it on, but I didn't use anything else like MSAA or SMAA. It would basically be just FXAA or the toggle on or off. If there was none of those options, then it would basically just be off. But I'm pretty sure that in all of these games, we had some form of anti-aliasing on one way or the other. And then everything else cranked all the way up to the max, but no game works because I just don't feel that that's fair. And to keep things you know, consistent between NVIDIA and AMD cards in the future, where I'm going to be referencing back to these numbers, no game works is used here, but that's why I went back through and tested all of these games again. GTA 5, I decided to stop using the in-game benchmark, and I went and tested um, through Sandy Shores area of the game, which is known to be particularly taxing. So I went and tested through Sandy Shores on that. Uh, in the Division, I also stayed away from the in-game benchmark, and I tested in the Dark Zone. So I tested in there for the Division. Uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider also, I mentioned that, that we had switched over to DirectX 11, and also I switched out of the in-game benchmark, again because of feedback from you guys, and started using the Geothermal va Valley area of the game, because a lot of people had said use the uh, Geothermal Valley, because there are known to be some frame rate er uh, dips there, so I went ahead and tested through that area quite extensively. And then Ashes of the Singularity, just a minor tweak. I decided to just set that at the crazy preset so I didn't have to keep going back in and changing things. So it's just at the basic crazy preset, which is the highest one available in there. So that's all of the setting changes that I made into the games uh, that I just, you know, wanted to clarify for you guys for now and going forward in the future, those tests, those testing changes that I made for all of the benchmarks and the system specs for you guys maybe that, that might be new here. I am running off of my i7-6800K overclocked to 4.3 gigahertz. I've also got 32 gigabytes of RAM in there and the CPU is uh, water cooled and you know it's an X99 build so X99A uh, Asus motherboard 1300 watt power supply but that stuff really um, won't affect the performance too much here so we're going to go ahead and jump in now to the Rockin' Benchmarks and see what the scores were on these 20 games that I tested over the three resolutions. As I mentioned in all three cards, the 1070, 1060, and the GTX 1080. So let's go ahead and get fired into it now with those Rockin' Benchmarks.
right, so you guys got to look at the numbers there with the GTX 1060, 1070, and 1080. I think this should serve as a really good uh, launching point for anyone that does want to know, you know, how these cards are going to perform at, you know, they're given price points and all that. And all of the cards tested today were at stock settings. All the cards were just tested at stock. I didn't overclock them at all. I just put them in the system, uh, you know, reinstalled the drivers clean and just let it run. And that's all I did, turned VSync off and just, you know, all the settings that we went over earlier. Um, but yeah, that was it, just stock settings. So that's the 1060, 1070, and 1080. Um, one the odd one that kind of really stood out to me in there was Overwatch, where the 1060, which I retested like four freaking times, and I did it in a way where my benchmark now in Overwatch is extremely consistent. I used to test in a live match, but I found that that was inconsistent. So now I went back and I just do the, uh, the, 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 the private shooting range and I go through with Farah and I do the same thing over and over again, every single time. And I do three passes at each resolution on each different card. And then I get an average of that right there. And every single time that I ran it through the GTX 1060 won out at 4k in overwatch. I I have no way to explain this. I went over all of my settings, you know, triple, like three times, like went through all the settings. Everything was on Epic. I had everything, you know, the the, the resolution scaling was at 100% on all of them. Nothing was changed in there. All of it was identical. So I don't know why the 1060 was winning at 4K. The 1080 and 1440 performance scaled perfectly on Overwatch. So really odd there that the 1060 went out in 4K. I think that needs uh, some further testing maybe uh, in the future there. So obviously we know the 1080 is at the top of the stack here for the 10 series of NVIDIA cards, not including the, the new Titan X Pascal edition. So we know that that's really sitting at the cream of the crop, but the 1060 and the 1070, which are really in the more realistic price ranges of what people might be able to afford as kind of being like sweet spot 1080 and 1440p cards, because we see the GTX 1060 at 1080p being able to power 17 out of 20, you know, of these games over 60 FPS, only falling behind in three games, Witcher 3, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and The Division, and even those were still very playable, um, you know, at 10, you know, 1080p on the GTX 1060. And then on the GTX 1070, it was the same case as well, where the only games that it fell behind in 1440p were Witcher 3, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and the, the Division, but still very playable at that resolution in all of those titles, and if you were to tweak the settings, you can easily get that over 60 frames, given how close it was to 60 FPS there. So the 1060 really does look like to, it's the um, kind of the perfect sweet spot card at uh, you know under $300, for 1080p while the you know gtx 1070 is the perfect 1440p card at around 420 430 dollars depending on which one you get the founder edition i got here today was 450 um, but you know most of the aftermarket cards are around that 400 to 430 dollar price point unfortunately i haven't i haven't been able to find any any under 400 dollars right now but chances are in a few months if you're watching this then you'll probably be able to find some under 400 and I will link to down to the search on Amazon down in the description below. And just to also show the diminishing returns that you get when you, you know, jump up in terms of, you know, pricing on these cards and how much gains you actually see, just to kind of give you guys an example here on Firestrike, which I think is a really good example of, you know, just showing the actual raw GPU performance of the GPU itself. Going from the 1060 to the 1070, we saw a 40% gain in the score there going from the 1060s to the 1070. When we went from the 1070 to the, the 1070 to the 1080, we only saw an increase of 16%. And in most of the benchmarks that I went through here and looked at the percentages, you know, gain or lost or whatever, that was kind of fairly consistent where the, in the 1060 to 1070 was in like that um, kind of like 30 to 40% range where the 1070 to the 1080, you're only getting maybe like a 10 to 20% bump there. So uh, you're not getting as much there, you know, when you're choosing to go out and spend that, you know, six to $700 on the GTX 1080 over the 1070. So unless you're really focused on doing 4K, I would say your best bet is to probably stick with the 1070 unless you're, you know, super concerned about games like Witcher 3 and Rise of the Tomb Raider and The Division and, you know, maybe future-proofing yourself a bit, then the 1080 could be a better bet. But if you're someone that's going to want to upgrade, you know, most every generation or every two generations, then I've always found that the 70 series has kind of been right in that perfect sweet spot there, you know, at, you know, around $400. And I expect to see some cards at under $400 in a few months' time. Right now, unfortunately, they are a little bit more than that. But yeah, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. Don't forget to go ahead and click our links down in the description below where you can pick up the 1060, 1070, or 1080 
over on Amazon. And if you like this content and want to see more of it in the future, go ahead and check out the Patreon page that I'm going to link down in the description below and let me know your thoughts on all of these benchmarks and what you're going to be getting. Are you going to be getting the 1060, the 1070 or the 1080? You know, where are you going there? And, you know, if you have any questions also, please let me know, you know, in the comments there and I'll be happy to answer any of your questions if you're kind of on the fence and don't know which card to get one way or the other. You know, if, I, if, I, there's, a, if there's a question you have that I can answer, I'll do my best to go ahead and help you with that. So I will catch you guys next time. Turn.